in the Lord worthy to be praised. The Bible says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same sun, that means day by day, every day, you ought to wake up to give it praise. Go to bed praise him. Regardless of what has come, what has happened, amen. We know it's Memorial Day and we know it's a time that uh, we reflect on those who have fallen and given their lives and for us to have our freedom and experience our freedom. But I want to take you to a word right quick in Acts 10. I'm not bringing the word today. I'm just going to give a nugget right quick. Glory to God. I don't, you know, sometimes, don't get me wrong. I, I love holidays, but I think we misuse holidays in the church. Yes, 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 we take holidays as a time to get away from God, but it's really a time we ought to get closer to God. Amen? And so even though we know it's Memorial Day and we're celebrating those who have done what they have done, but I'm going to show you what Memorial is in the Word. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at that Acts the 10th chapter. In the defending is found in Acts right after we're celebrating Pentecost. Yes, that's it. Amen. The Bible says that there was Acts 10, verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. He was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, his whole house. And the Bible says he gave much alms to the people and he prayed to God always. The Bible says he saw in a vision. And notice when you learn how to give and pray, you'll see vision. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying, Cornelius, see prayer works. Yes, it does. Giving works. Yes. Sacrificing works. And when he looked on him, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto them, listen at this, thy prayers, thy giving are come up as a memorial before God. See, we're celebrating Memorial Day, but God is having a memorial around your prayers and your giving. Come on here, y'all. Oh, my God. God's remembering Watch this. Watch this. The Bible said we die daily. Yes. Every time you sacrifice your life through your giving. Every time you sacrifice time yes. in prayer. Yes. Look what the Bible said. God's remembering me. Yes. Now I ain't going in on this because I ain't preaching today. What happens when God starts to remember what you do? What happens when God starts to remember all your efforts and energy toward him? The Bible says he spoke to a man in another place, Peter. Made him change his whole outlook on life and sent him to Cornelius' house. To release a word because see anything God wants to do in the earth, a lot of times he got to do it through a problem. He got to send somebody. Oh, glory. He sent a man to him and said, everything you've done, I remember. And now that I remember it, guess what? I'm about to release a blessing on your house. Yes. Glory to God. I'm about to release. Let me show it to you. Look at verse 31. Actually, 30. And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour, at the ninth hour. See, don't be afraid to fast. Don't be afraid to give. Don't be afraid to sow. Don't be afraid to sacrifice. God is going to remember. All of us going to show up in front of him one day at his throne. Watch this here. And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour at the ninth hour. I prayed in my house, in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothes and said, Cornelius, thy prayers heard. 
that arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. See, I got to go to here because I, I just don't want us to misconstrue. I want us to be excited. I want us to enjoy it. But I want us to understand I ain't sacrificing God for nothing. I don't care what day it is. I'm glad God is remembering our prayer time. He's remembering our home. He's remembering our sex. The Bible says it came up before him and it was a memorial. That's just why I turn this thing over. All I want you to believe you with on this nugget is simply this. Are you doing, what are you doing to make God remember you? What are you doing to make God remember you? The Bible says, and not only that, the Bible says Peter came, and then God began to use Peter to minister to everybody in his house. His whole house got saved. His whole house got delivered. Why? Because he learned the value of prayer. He learned the value of fasting. He learned the value of living. The Bible says he was a devout man. He learned the value of living an upright life. Not the poor man. He wasn't trying to oppress folk. He said, but if I could be seen by God. Ooh, glory. In the end of the story, everybody got saved. Everybody got delivered. Everybody got set free. Look at uh, verse 44, and I'm out of this. And it says that while Peter was yet speaking or telling them this, the Bible said, the Holy Ghost told them all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles was poured out what? The Holy Ghost. So I'm remembering those who have done what they've done, but I'm saying, God, remember my prayer. Remember my own. Remember the time I've sacrificed and laid before you. And release a blessing. How many of you ready for God to release a blessing in God? See, you can't get mad at folks when they get blessed. Look to see what they're doing. Yeah, come on. Amen. And then learn to do what they do. Yeah, the Bible said the man prayed, the man gave, the man fasted, he sacrificed. That was his holiday. This holiday, I just want to be in the presence of God. Because I don't know when a miracle I'm going to need. I don't know when a mighty move of God I'm going to need. I don't know when, when I'm going to need God to have in remembrance the sacrifice of what has been done. Glory to God. Lift your hands and just begin to worship God, if you will. Now that I was going to come and bring the word on this morning. I just wanted to give you that nugget. It's just been in my spirit all week. The memorial. It's been a trying week. How many of you know my son just had an accident this week? Could have been dead. Should have been dead. But God. But God. Come on. But God. He's home now. But God. He's in recovery, but God. Yes. See, I can't, I can't, I can't play with this stuff. Come on, come on. I can't come take on. life like this. Come on. Yes. That shit don't know
start to really understand this, this, this ain't a flag or a post, it's just a fact. And I think it was Jacqueline called one of those people, younger girls, she said, said, everybody could take it to me. Yeah. You may not be doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, but if you're connected, He said, oh, ye of little faith. 
He said, he also said that they was a wicked and an adulterous generation. Go to Matthew 17, flip over a, book, uh, a chapter. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm wanting to show you some comparisons here. Matthew 17, verses, verse 14 is where I'm going to start. And it says, and when they were come to the multitude, they came to him, and a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore begged. For oft time he falleth into the fire, and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. Underline those two. Highlight it. Oh, faithless and perverse generation. We're talking about the generation. You see this. In 16, it said, wicked and adulterous generation. 17, it said, oh, faith. He said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. See, this is a gen We have a generation of this time that needs rebuke. Amen. We have we we have thought the church have gotten away from correcting. The word rebuke simply means that he's disapproval of he's dis, he disapproves of that. And there's a generation that God is dis, dis, has disapproval of. And that's what this verse, that's what I wanted to show you. He said, wicked and adulterous generation, faith, oh faithless and perverse generation. He said, and it says, Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. So that sometimes that's all it takes is a rebuke. Mm, sometimes that's all this generation needs is correction and be rebuked. And the devil will leave. So let's go, go with me to Philippians 2. Uh, to Philippians 2. I, want, I, I pray that I pray y'all get this today, because this word God gave me one word, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, and it was in Matthew. Then later, I was laying, and God gave me another verse to go to, and oh, how He just put it together, and it just um, it's just it's just amazing how God just uh, aligns it all together, line upon line, He'll do. There are little could all make sense. Amen. Philippians 2 is where I want to go. Verses 14. Verse 14 is where I want to start. Highlight this. Undermine these. Because I'm, I want you to see what Jesus is saying. Fourteen it says. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke. We are, you and I are to be the sons of God that he shouldn't have to rebuke. He said without rebuke. Now in Matthew 17, he said he rebuked the devil out of that, out of their man's son. And he left and he was cured. Here it said, this sons of God without rebuke. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Right. Underline that. He said, I want you to be sons and daughters without rebuke in the midst, while you're in the midst on earth, in the crooked and perverse generation. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, in the midst of, why you're going to be surrounded by those, and we're the time living in the times in the latter days and the end days where we are surrounded by crooked, perverse, faithless, adulterous, and wicked generation. But he said, you still should be without rebuke. You still should remain sons and daughters without rebuke. Amen? So here it says, it, it says, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as the light of the world. You still should be shining. You still should be the light even in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Is this not, do y'all not see this? Is that not the, do, is this not 
about what we're living in now. Amen. This is this is this is what we this is the time that we're uh, that we're living in now. The Bible is speaking of it. And then 16 it says, holding forth the word of life. Hold, you're supposed to keep holding on to the word of God. Not letting go. He said, holding on to the word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. He wow. said, you still should be running. You still should be running with the word of God. You still should be approved and uh, being righteous. You still should be all of that. And not, I shouldn't have to rebuke you even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Amen? Amen. So do you see this here? God is saying, we, in these last days, in these days that we're living, there's a generation that's wicked, adulterous, perverse, faithless. It's some things that's going on in this nation, in, this, in the generation of this time, used to be frowned upon, but it's common now. Come on. We've just fallen into it and accepted it. We won't say that, oh, we got hush mouth now. Oh, we, the church has become shut mouth. We won't say that, though. We won't respond. We won't correct. We won't rebuke. We won't say you need deliverance. Because guess what? The generation got more power than we do. And God said that should be so. Go with me to Mark 8. How the generation going to be dominant over the kingdom of God? An adulterous generation. People don't care about they get married and they cheat. Cheating is common now. You made a vow before God. You, 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 you married, you made a vow before God, you made a covenant. It ain't nothing to break a covenant nowadays. It, it's become common. Wicked. He said, oh, faithless, they don't believe in nothing. They don't know what they believe in. They don't know what God they're serving. You ask them who was that God, you, they wouldn't be able to tell you. But we sitting, we sitting back. And we won't say that. Mark 8. Mark 8, verse 36. Oh, it's out today, but I can amen myself. I know this word that God told me to say. Mark 8, 36, it says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? This generation is gaining the world and losing their soul. Going to hell so fast. He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? Gain these followers in the whole world, everybody in your corner, and you know you're doing wrong, and you out here adul uh, committing adultery, you're doing wicked, you're killing, you're stealing, you're robbing, and you're going to lose your soul. He said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? People are selling their souls to the devil. That's the generation of this time, of this day. They sell their souls. They have sold their souls to the devil. They become sons and daughters of the devil. That, that, that was the exchange, exchange. For what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 38. Whosoever Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adultery, there it is again, adulterous and sinful, highlight on the line. Do you see the comparison here? Yeah. Do y'all see this? He's saying the same thing. Mark in Mark in Mark verse 38, he said, Whatsoever shall that whatsoever therefore shall be ashamed of whosoever, I'm sorry, therefore shall be ashamed of me. In my words, in this, uh, in this adulterous generation, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of the Father with his holy angels. He said, I'm, I'm ashamed of you. I'm 
a shame because you still you still in adultery. You still sin. The Bible tells us, do do I continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But he's saying here, he's saying in all these verses, even from Matthew 16, 17, 17, Philippians, adulterous, wicked, faithless, perverse. Oh, oh, if this generation ain't perverted. Oh, if this generation of these days ain't perverted. Oh, yeah, Lord Jesus, help me, Holy Ghost. Women dancing with women, men doing whatever. Oh, it ain't that. I told you some things ain't even, we, we don't even frown upon it no more. They don't even care. They, because we've allowed this to come in. We've opened, the, the doors have been open, and they've been bust wide open. Now everything is, everything is just okay to do. They showing it on prime television. It's on regular TV. You can't even watch regular TV with your kids without having to cover their eyes, change the channel real quick, because there's so much perverted. You can't even watch a good movie on Netflix. Commercials. All we know, all this generation, and Lord, I tell you, Lord, help me. I, I'm, I got to stand with the Lord, tell me, say, all we know is twerking and being naked. That's it. And the women, Lord, we need elderly women in the church so bad to teach the younger women because what I'm saying is, the even young children doing it. They know how to do things that older women don't even know how to do. But they learning it from something that's doing. They learn it and it starts at home. It starts at home with the parents. And don't y'all be mad at me because I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. We do it all. And we don't have no conviction. And that's sad. It's sad, and now and, and I gotta explain to my five year old. Oh, you can't ch change that channel. Oh, you can't do this. And when we go in the store, Mama, is that a mom? Is that a man or a woman? Why she dressed like this? Why he dressed like? I have to explain this to my five year old. But God says, this is the generation of this time. This is the generation of the times we're living in. Go to Deuteronomy thirty two. We have a, the generation of this time that needs to be rebuked. And the church got to repent. Because we've gotten away from rebuking, correcting. Because we're scared we're going to offend the saints. We're scared we're going to offend the church. And they're going to be, who cares? If they leave, they wouldn't go us anyway. But this generation needs to be rebuked. This generation needs to be corrected because they're full of demons. They possess. They need to be delivered. And I'm going to tell you how it started. Because I said it started at home. Parents got to get back to teaching their children. Parents got to get back to not doing things in front of their kids because kids are like a sponge. They absorb it. People see you before they hear you. And children, adolescent age, they seeing things, and you just wait, it's going to manifest. You're going to say, what are they learning that from? What are they learning from you in your house? You talking to them. And then when they do it out in public, we embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. But sometimes you okay with it, because you join in with them. We smoking with them, we drinking with them. They having orders. Marriage people, have, marriage people, have bringing people, other people in the bedroom, defiling the bed, defiling the bedroom. I'm just being, I'm just telling, what, telling you the way uh, what God told me to tell you. I'm not gonna get to this. Lord help me, so go. What did I say? Go to Deuteronomy. Ishi ki or I'm gonna read Deuteronomy 32. And I'm going to read mine in the message, and it's going to read a little different from y'all. So if you have a uh, message version, go there, please. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And it says, listen, heavens, I have something to tell you. Attention, earth. I've got 
got a mouth full of words. My teaching, let it fall like a gentle rain. My words arrive like morning dew, like a sprinkling rain on new grass, like spring showers on the garden. For it's God's name I'm preaching. Respond to the greatness of our God. The rock, his works are perfect. The way he works is fair and just. A God you can depend on. No expectation. A straight arrow, God. Our God is a straight shooter. That's why I'm shooting his word to you straight just like he gave it to you. Amen? It says, his messed up, mixed up truth. Messed up, mixed up children. His non-children throw mud at him, but none of the sticks. Don't you realize it is God you're threatening like this? This is crazy. Don't you have any sense of reverence? This generation don't have no reverence. They don't reverence God. They don't have no sense of reverence at all. He said, do you have any, it says, this is crazy. Do you have any sense of reverence? Isn't this your father who created you? Who made you and gave you a place on earth? Read up on what happened before you were born. He said, I knew you even in your mother's womb. We won't even sit down with our children and tell them. It's, he said, it, well, let me go on. I'm going to get to it. It says, read up on it. Read up on what happened before you were born. Dig into the past. This is why generation bloodlines need to be researched. This is why we need to know what's in our bloodline. This is why we don't know generational curses that are still hanging over us. This is why it's important we need to dig into our bloodline and understand what your father's bloodline possibly had taught on uh, generational curses. So, It says, dig into it, into the past. Understand your roots. Ask, ask your parents what, what it was like before you were born. Ask the old ones. I told you we need, we need some elders in the church. Where the elders? Where the older women that's supposed to teach the younger women? Where the elderly men that's supposed to be helping bringing up these younger men? It says, ask your elders. But the elders should be trying to be like the younger ones. So we can't even identify who the elder and who the uh the young. You can't, there's no difference between the two. You can't distinguish who the elder and who the younger. Who teaching who? Okay, back to this. It says, ask your parents what it was like before you were born. Ask the old ones. They'll tell you the thing or a thing or two. When the high God gave the nations the state. Gave their place, gave them their place on earth. He put each of the peoples within boundaries. Won't we'll have no boundaries no more. There's no more boundaries. This generation don't have boundaries. They do it all. Under the care of divine guardians. Guardians. But God Himself took charge of His people. He took Jacob on as his personal concern. God is concerned about us. He found him out in the he found him out in the wilderness in, in an empty windswept wasteland. He threw his arms around him, lavished attention on him, guarding him with guarding him as the apple of his eye. He was like an eagle hovering over the nest. The parents ain't hovering over their children. God said, I'm hovering. I, those that are mine, I hover over them. I protect them. I train them. I teach them. He said, I, he was like an eagle hovering over the nest, overshadowing its young. We're not shadowing our young. We let our young do whatever they want to do. Then spreading his wing, lifting them into the air, teaching them. We go, teaching them to fly. God alone led him. There was not a foreign God in sight. This generation in these latter days, in the time we're living in, serve foreign gods. Am I lying? I 
I said it. They serve a foreign God. It says it right here. It was not a foreign God in sight. God lifted him up into the hilltop. See, this is why we can't be afraid of heights. Because your blessing is, is going to be higher. Your blessing is going to be on the hilltop. Go on, as we go on, it says, it says, so he could feast on the cross. Where the cross is? On the hilltop. In the fields. He fed him with honey. This is his people. He said, I fed him with honey from the rock, the oil from the granny, the granny crag, crag, crud of the uh, fries of the cattle, and the milk of the sheep, the short, the choice cut of lamb. Is that not a feast? Apostle just preached on the of Pentecost. Been teaching of the feast of uh, the feast of the Pentecost, the feast of festivals. That sounds like a feast to me. It says the choice cut of lamb and goat, fine ba ba bashing ram, high quality wheat, and the blood of grapes. You drink good wine. Good wine. Not old wine, you can't, like the Bible says, you can't put old wine in new wine schemes. You drink good wine. Okay, so it says, Jay Shron put on weight and book. Okay, this is where it's the shift. This is where it's beginning to shift. That's where it's, where it's beginning to change. It says, Jay Shron put on weight and book. Now, who, what, what, what animal book? A goat, don't you? There's a difference between sheep and goats. Goat book. They they rebel. They don't they they don't want to do what you instruct them to do. They go against your uh, instructions, your directions, your guidance. Goat book. It be goats in the church. It's, it it be some goats in the church. Oh. All of them ain't sheep. And the one, and I'm helping you identify, and you, and you examine yourself whether you a sheep or a goat. If you bucking against what apostle, the leaders, and the elders saying, I'm trying, I got to go. Hold on. Okay, so it says, put on weight and buck. You got fat and became obese. A tub of lard. He abandoned the, the he abandoned the God who made him. Now you are left God. It says you abandoned. This generation been left God. This generation abandoned God. And then he goes on to say, he abandoned the God who made him. He mocked the rock of his salvation. He abandoned, then mocked. The word of God said, be not deceived, for I am not mocked. Then it says, they made him jealous with their foreign, newfangled God. They made God jealous. They, said they, made, they made him jealous with their foreign, newfangled gods and with their obscenities. They vexed him no end. They sacrificed to no God demons. Didn't I tell you? Demons, devils, witches, warlocks. Matthew said wickedness in the adulterous generation. Did he not say that? So we're talking about demons, devils, witches, and warlocks. They abandon God to serve and sacrifice, to serve and worship devils. Okay. They sacrifice to know God, demons, gods they knew nothing about. The latest, the latest in God. The latest in gods. Fresh from the market. Okay, when we think about the in the biblical days, the markets was where? In the streets. In the city. It says, ladies, God. Fresh from the what? Fresh from the market. Okay. Fresh from the street. Okay. Straight, fresh from the city. Okay. They sacrificed no God's demons. God, they knew nothing. Of, they, didn't know, they don't even know nothing about these gods. Nothing. Demons, God, they knew nothing about. Ladies in God, fresh from the market. God, your ancestors would never have called God. That's why you got to do your research. That's why, you, that's why the younger need to be talking to their parents and the elders. It says, God, that their ancestors wouldn't even fool with. That's right. That they wouldn't even, they would never call.
called them God. They would never bow to them. They would never worship them. They would never serve them. But they did. They did. Okay. They did. Let's keep going. You walked out on the rock who gave you your life. You walked out on the rock of your salvation. And that's a capital R. Jesus is the solid rock. You left Jesus. You abandoned him. Not only did you walk out on the rock who gave you your life, it says, forgot, forgot the birth God who brought you into the world. Jesus. You walked out and you forgot. You walked out and you forgot. You forgot it was him that created you. You forgot it was him that gave you life. You forgot it was him that breathed into your nostrils. You walked out and you lost memory. You had no more recollection, no more memory. And then it says, forgot, okay, so you forgot the birth God who brought you into this world. God saw it and turned on his heel. Okay, here we go. This, how, how many of you know the Bible says it is dangerous to fall in the hands of an angry God? Now you can see God angry. Angry. It says, God showed, God saw it and turned on his heel. Angered and hurt by his son and his daughter. Jeez. It ain't just men out here killing and shooting and stealing. Women doing stuff too. It says sons and his daughters. He said, from now on, I'm looking the other way. Ooh. He said, I turned my back. The Bible said, oh, the Bible says this when he said, God, it says he'll laugh at your calamity. Turn your back. I don't see it no more. <laughs> I'm so stupid. He just laughed. <laughs> What's going on? What are they going through? He said, okay, he said, I, I, God saw, he saw it. He saw it in turn. He saw it in turn his heels, angered and hurt his, by his son and his daughters. He said, for now I'm looking the other way. Wait, oh wait, behold and wait. It says, wait and see what happens to them. We're talking about a perverted, wicked, adulterous, faithless, sinful generation. He said, oh, wait and see what happens to them. Oh, they'll turn around, upside down generation. Highlight it. Underline it. It said they were turned around and upside down. Oh, they're turned around upside down generation. That's the generation of this time, right now, in this day, and we're living in. Turn, they're turned around upside down generation. Who knows what they'll do from one moment to the next? They, they go me with their God, their word, that simply means they annoyed me. Mm. They annoyed me, they provoked me. How many of you can? Provoke God Jesus. to turn his back and let calamity come on you. Annoyed him. They said they okay, so in that verse it says, they go they go me with their no, with their no gods, infuriated me with their hot air gods. I'm going to go them with no people. Mm. Now the Bible says. I will be your God and you will be my people. It says that in several places of the word in the Bible. But he's saying here in Jerusalem, he said, I will go up you, I will go up them with no people. How quickly you can change from his people, being his people, him being your God, you being his people to no people. I will, go, I will go on you with no people, with, with a hallowed nation incense them. My anger started a fire, a wildfire burning down in shallow, then shooting up and devouring the earth and its crop, settling up, setting all the mountains from bottom to top on fire, a pile of catastrophes on them. It said a pile of catastrophes. 
How many know when the storms come through uh, Birmingham and come through Alabama, they, most insurance companies, they send out their catastrophe team. When we, see, when we saw what happened over there in Fultondale, and we saw what happened over there on 2A, when we had those storms, they considered that a catastrophe. Insurance companies sent out a catastrophe team to examine what the aftermath, what was done. But the Bible said he will pile catastrophes on one upon another. We've seen pile. We 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 we've seen pile of things happen before. Is that not what's happening now? It said he will pile catastrophes. Lord God, help us, Jesus. I'll pile catastrophes on them. I'll shoot my arrows at them. Starvation, blistering heat, killing diseases. Oh my God. Killing diseases. I'll send snarling wild animals to attack from the forest. Venomous creatures to strike. Lord, I, I, this, whole, this word, oh holy ghost. Venomous creatures to strike from the dust. Killing in the street. Terror. Is that not happening today? Is that not taking place in, now in this season, in this time that we're living in? It says killing in the street. It's so much brutality. It's so much cruelty. We got people killing each other. We, I mean, it's so much going on. You can't even turn on the news and watch television or, and find out what the weather is without hearing about a killing every other day around the block, around the corner, next door to you. Amen? This is the generation of this time, though. He said, killing in the streets, terror in the houses. Young men, virgins alike, struck down, and yes, beast feeding babies, gray haired old men. Ain't nobody to see them. I, call, I, I could have said, I'll hack, I'll hack them to pieces, wipe out all trace of them from the earth, except that I feared the enemy would grab the chain to take the credit of it all. Some things God is allowing to happen. And we just, we, and, and we continue to pray and we're praying and as I was studying this word, we're praying about the fruit of a matter. But God said we got to get to the root of it. We're praying about we, we, and, that, and that's no, that's no wrong with that. We're praying. We want the violence to stop. We want the killing to stop. We want the murder, uh, uh, the, uh, the the senseless and the cruelty, and the brutality to stop. But now, sometimes when those things don't shift, you have to. When those things don't change, you got to change the way you pray. Sometimes you got to call it by name. If it's a adulterous generation, we need to talk. We need to be praying about the adulterous generation. We need to be calling the wicked generation. We need to be saying. Uh, perverted, we need to be praying against perverted generation. We need to ask God to put these, ba these uh, barriers back up, these back, and they have some boundaries. Because we're praying, we're praying about the fruit, but we got to get to the root of the thing. The Bible says, lay the axe to the root. We got to lay the axe to the root of this matter. And the, and this and the time is this generation in this in this in these times. It's an adulterous generation, a wicked generation. They serving demons and devils and witches and warlocks, and they're out all time and night, all day long, doing evil, sinful. Oh, faith! They don't believe in nothing. They 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 don't have no belief in nothing. They're serving. Uh, the Bible said they're serving uh, gods that their ancestors wouldn't even serve. But this is why God is sending the word like this. So we can get back to teaching and training and praying for deliverance because the people are bound. The word of God said he's anointed us to preach a word in this season to set the captives free. These people need, this generation needs to be free. They're in bondage. And there's curses over them. And it can be from one generation, the first, second, third, fourth generation of curses. And then, and then, then
then we'll have, we'll have children, we're passing on these uh, curses to the next generation. And parents and mothers and fathers are just sitting back and saying, oh, I did my best. It, you know, a lot of people say it takes a village. You do, but it started at home. And some of the parents have, and parents have dropped the ball. And even our neighbors and our friends, and they, they, they're afraid to say anything. But the Bible said, if you, they that know their God shall be bold and strong and do great exploits. It's time for us to be bold. It's time for us to open our mouth. He said, if you open your mouth, I'll fill it. He said, I'll be your front God as well as your rear God. Say what thus said the Lord. Stop being, stop being concerned about how they're going to perceive it. Don't be moved by their faces, he said. Oh, I'm scared I may offend them. The word of God comes to offend. The word of God, it, it, it comes to correct. But we're going to hold the word of God in unrighteousness. God is not pleased. God is angered. He's displeased with this generation. And when I read this, I, I, I almost ran. I, I wanted to do what a pastor said. I wanted to run down the street and my neighbor could just read me. I was like, my God. So uh, where was I? Uh, 28, okay. Thank you. My God, I'm going to read the Holy, Holy Ghost. It says, verse 28, it says, they are a nation of ninnies and they don't know enough to come out of the rain. If they had any sense, Lord, we need some sense, Lord Jesus, give us some. It says, if they have any sense at all, they know this and they would see what's coming down the road. If, if they had any sense, they'll know. They'll see what's coming down the road. They'll see what's ahead. But how many know the Bible said, the devil will blind the eyes of the believer. He will blind them. They got blinders on. They can't see what's coming ahead. They can't see what's down the road. They don't know what's coming against them. Listen. Gonna get caught off guard. How could one soldier chase a thousand enemies off or two men run off two thousand unless the rock has sold them, unless God has, has given them away? For the rock is nothing compared to our rock, capital rock, Jesus Christ. Even our enemies say that. They're in a vine that comes right out of Sodom, who they are enrooted in Gomorrah. My God. Sodom and Gomorrah, Jesus. Are y'all hearing this? It says they in vine, they are a vine that comes right out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Out of Sodom and being rooted in Gomorrah. Then it goes on and says, the grapes are poison grapes. Their grapes, I'm sorry, their grapes are poison grapes. Their grape clusters bitter. Their wine rattlesnake venom. I'm going to get to this. Holy Ghost, help me. The wine is, their wine is rattlesnake venom mixed with lethal cobra pussy. That's why y'all can't hang with them. That's why you can't be drinking with them. That's why you can't be partying with them. It said they wine poison. He says venomous. That's, that's, are y'all reading this with me? It said the grapes they eat are poison. The wine is rattlesnake venom. Mix, it's mix, it's rattlesnake venom mixed with lethal cobra poison. It's dead. Don't you realize that I have my shells well stocked, locked behind iron doors? I'm in charge of it. See, that's the problem. We have too many out here. They're, ha they're beefing with one another in the streets, and they take the matters into their own hands. And the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. But no, we want to retaliate. We got one side of, we got the east side, the west side, these different, uh, these different areas. These different areas and these different uh, projects and people shooting up each other with just retaliation. And then people out here, innocent people get killed. Children get killed. Like the girl that got shot at the park. You can't even go to the park with your children anymore and, and feel like you're going to.
going to be safe because people are retaliating and they're taking, they're shooting, they're stabbing and killing. And he says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I don't repay. Just waiting for them to slip up. And then it says, in the day of their doom. Apostle talks about the day of Pentecost. How many know it's the day of doom? Mm. He said, in the day, in the day of their doom, it's just around the corner. Just around the corner, sudden, swift, and sure. They day coming. This generation of this time gonna have a day that's coming. And it's just around the corner. Verse 36 says, Yes, God will judge his people, but oh how compassionately he'll do it. When he sees their weakness, when he sees their weakened plank, and there is no one left slave or free, he'll say, So where is their God? So where, so where are their gods, their rock in which they saw refuge? The gods who feasted on the fat of their sacrifice, drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them show you stuff. Help you. Let them show you stuff and help you. Let them give you a hand. Where that God is now? Where, that's what he's saying. Where is your God is now? Them gods that you, them new and famous gods. He's, he's, he's asking here, where they, where they got it? Do you see? What, if they don't help, that's what he said. Let them help. Let them give your hand. Then verse 39, he says, do you see it now? Do you see it now? Do you see that I'm the one? Do you see that there's no other God besides me? I bring death. I give life. I wound. I heal. There is no getting away from me. There's no getting away from or around me. You can't escape God. You, you, you abandon him. You, the Bible says he is, he's married to the backside. Even if you left and abandoned and forgot and lost his memory, he said, I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still present. I'm still present. I ain't went nowhere. You can't escape me. I see it all. I'm, I'm not present. That's what he said. That's what the word of God said. He said, ain't no getting around, no getting away from me. Okay, so he said, I bring death, I give life, I wound, I heal, and there's nothing away, there's no getting away from or around me. I raise my hand and solemn oath. I say, I'm always around. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm always around. By that very life, I promise, when I sharpen my lightning sword and I execute judgment, I take vengeance on my enemies. I pay back. Then I say, he said, vengeance is mine, I shall repay. He said, I'll pay back to those who hate me. He said, I'll pay back to those who hate me. Those that don't worship me. Those that don't believe. Those that are out here doing senseless killing and robbing and stealing. I'm going, your day of doom is just around the corner. I'll make my hours drunk with blood. My sword will gorge itself on flesh. Feasting on slain and captives alike. The proud in the vain enemy court. Celebrate nations. Verse 43. Celebrate nations. Join the praise of his people. His avengeth, his avengeth, the he avenges the death of his servants. Pay back his enemies with vengeance. And cleanse his land for his people. Verse 44. Moses came and recited all these words of the song in the hearing of the people and Joshua of Numa. When Moses had finished saying all these things, words to all Israel, he said, take to heart. Take to heart. I pray today that y'all take it to heart. He said, take to heart all these words to which I give witness today. Urgently command you, urgently, say urgently, Urgently command. I told you to start at home. It said, urgently command your children to put them into practice. Every single word of this revelation. Yes, this is no small matter. This ain't no small matter. This is a big matter of God. Look how much he's saying. Look how much he's revealing. This is not no small matter for 
for you. It's your life. He said, it's your life. Do you care about it? Do you care about it enough to urgently make some changes? Do you care about it to repent? Because they said a day of doom is just round the corner if you don't. It's your life. In keeping these, in keeping this word, you'll have a good and long life in this land that you're crossing the joy to possess. Do you hear what God is saying? I say, God, you are really concerned about this generation of this time. I, 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 when I was reading it, I, 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 it was just overtaking me. I was like, God, you, you concerned this generation of this time is wicked, it's adulterous, it's faithless, it's perverted, it's sinful. Go with me to Matthew 22. No, no, Matthew 23. And I didn't even have a, a title for this message, but God sent me right to the end of where he wanted me. Glory to God. When I tell you, when the Holy Spirit wakes you up at 8 a.m. in the morning, and it is, you got words just running and ringing and loud, and you get up and read. Come on. Get up and read. Make notes. Take notes. That's all right. He'll give you strength for the rest of the day. He will give you strength. But God is concerned about this generation. God is concerned about the, the, the people in this la in these latter days and what's going on. Don't think he's not concerned. He's concerned. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have sent the word like this. The Bible says he does nothing first without revealing it through a prophet. It's going to happen. He's not a God that he shall lie down, but some of God that he shall repent. His word is not going to fall to the ground. It's going to manifest. Matthew 23, 33. Verse 33 as well. It says, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? The generation of this time is generation of vipers. Did we not read it in Deuteronomy when they talked about the venomous? Generation of vipers, that means we're talking about serpents, poisonous. They'll bite you. You have to take a certain, when most people kill a snake, they take, cut the head off, right? You got to cut it off at the head. It's Matthew, and Matthew 23 said, ye, gen, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. I, 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 I would have been done with my message and the Holy Spirit took me back to this. He said, this generation of vipers. Go to Matthew 12 and 34. I'm going to show you three places. So y'all won't think, I, I, y'all see it for yourselves, right? Okay. Matthew 12, verse 34. It says, oh, ye generation of vipers. This is, it's in red. It's in red. Jesus is saying, oh, ye generation of vipers. Oh, ye generation of vipers. Here it is again. Oh, it said, oh, generation of vipers. How can ye be evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. What's in your heart? You, you have evil in your heart. Do you see this? Generation of vipers. Go to Matthew 3 and 7. I'm going to close. This is the generation of the time. Of, these, of this time that we're living in. And this end time. Generation of vipers. And that's why we need to focus on how we're praying. Do y'all see it? Okay, here we go. Matthew 3 and 7. It says, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to him, come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? <laughs> then he said, a, a day was coming unto them. There you go, three times. It said it three times. Two or more. 
is established. The generation of this time, he said, generation of life. And I pray you ain't in that, I pray you're not a part of that generation. You're not partaking with generational vices, poisonous. They'll bite you. Even serpents, don't y'all know some serpents just get spit out them. They ain't, even, they ain't even got to bite you. If you're standing in, in, re, in a certain range, you still can get, uh, you still can get the poison. The poison still can reach you. And then you still die. So I pray today, Lord God, I pray. I'm going to close. Father God, we thank you now for your word. We thank you now for these ears that are here, these that are present in this moment. Lord, I pray that they urgently, urgently take heed what you say. Urgently practice it. Urgently teach it to their children. Urgently make a change. Urgently repent. Oh God, we pray for this generation. We bind up the spirit of wickedness. We bind up adultery. We bind up uh, pervertedness. And we pray for that they come into belief. We pray, Lord, oh help them in their doubt and unbelief, oh God. Lord, I pray that they don't abandon you. And if they have left you, I pray that they come running back. I pray that they repent and do the first works over again. That they fall in love with you, oh God. And that they don't be absent from you. That they don't be far away from you, God. But they be close and near you. They be at your feet just as Mary was at your feet, oh God. Oh God, we pray now. We pray for this generation. Oh God, we pray we bind up every serpent spirit, every leeching spirit, every python spirit, every anaconda spirit. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, break this now, oh God. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, oh God, and I pray for the church. I pray for the elders. I pray for the pastor. I pray, Lord God, that we'll get back to rebuking, to correcting, to reproving, to reproaching, oh God, to pray for their deliverance, oh God. That your people will be free and that they won't have to spirit that wildfire, as you mentioned in Deuteronomy. And that they won't have to experience that doom day that, that you said just around the corner. Help us, oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord God, we repent. Oh, we repent, oh God. We repent, Lord God, for serving other gods. We know that your word says that you are a jealous God. Yes. That you will, you will have no other God before you, oh God. Repent for serving God that our ancestors wouldn't even call God. We repent for partaking in every demon and de and every devilment, oh God. For not coming out from among them and being in step and said the Lord and touching and touch not the unclean thing. Oh God, we repent. Oh God. We don't want to be a disproval, but we want to be sons and daughters without rebuke. Uh. Even in the midst, even if we're still in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, oh God, thank you that we'll be pleasing to your sight. Thank you that we'll be in right standing with you. Thank you, Lord God, that we won't break covenant. Oh God, I thank you now, Lord Jesus. That your hand is still upon us and not against us. Lord God, we don't want to fall into the hands of an angry God just as your word is read. But we want to be pleasing to you, Lord. And we say these things. It's in your son, Jesus' name. In your Roshamoche. Thank you for correction. Thank you for chastising us. Thank you now, Lord God, for putting us back on the straight and narrow. Thank you, even on this Memorial Day weekend, that our prayers are a, a memorial to you, oh God. We will adjust the way we pray, oh God. We'll lay the axe to the root, oh God, Jesus. We'll lay the axe, and we'll call them by his name. If it's weak, we'll call it weak. If it's a ghost, we'll call it Perverted, we'll call it perverted. Thank you, now, Lord Jesus, for your revelation. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
knows where we are as a whole. As a whole, as a group, as a people. And with that, God will always send you one before destruction. The issue you have to deal with is pride. Pride will before destruction. A Holy Spirit before fall. When the word comes, all you can do is say, out, oh my, oh me. But get it right. Amen. And this is just one of those days. Amen. The word of God is loaded with truth, y'all. So much truth that watch this. He saw it before the world ever got to this stage. He saw it before the church ever got to this place. Amen. And even in this season, he still said, he ain't through yet. Amen. So let's make sure that we're in that spot, that place we need to be with God. So that we can be, we can receive the blessing he wants to pour out upon each of us. Amen. Let's go back to praying like we've never prayed. Giving like we've never given. Sacrifice. But remember, to keep your house in order. Amen. Glory to God. Even when he came and when the king was dying, he said, You get your house in order. He went back and he had a memorial. He said, God, remember what I've done. God, remember when I did this. God, don't forget how I served you. And the Bible says, and God told the prophet before he got out the gate, go back and tell him, I'm going to give him 15 more years. See, if you pray right, then I'm, I'm just validating what she said. Sometimes you got to adjust your prayer to get the additional years. Watch this. See, God can give you years when you only got days left. Come on, y'all. Remember when I told you about Jubilee and went from 50 years to 50 days? Some folks believe it in days. And God said, but if you correct yourself, mm, give me a word, hang out. He says, if you will consider your ways, I can turn days 